Your family theater presents Eddie Bracken, Kathy O'Donnell, and Branch Rickey. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network brings you The Scout, starring Eddie Bracken with Kathy O'Donnell. To introduce the drama, your host, Branch Rickey. Thank you, Gene. We on Family Theater welcome our stars, Eddie Brecken and Kathy O'Donnell, to our stage in a story that is close to my heart because I've been around the game of baseball for a pretty long time. Long enough to have a deep-seated respect for the sport and for the men who participate in it. Men like Lou Gehrig, Monty Stratton, George Sisler, Hannes Wagner, and the mighty Babe, who've given to it so many fine traditions of honesty, integrity, and courage. Men such as Skip Welch, whose story you'll hear tonight. No, no, you won't uh, find Skip's name in any World Series lineup. And it doesn't appear in any of the Major League record books. Yet, in my humble opinion, Skip was as great a big league ball player as they come. The reason why? Well, suppose I just begin the story for him and let him carry on from there. It was some years ago in a small Midwestern town of Rawson that a group of intent, wide-eyed boys from the local orphan asylum was gathered at the town's ball field. A grinning, cocky young fella in the uniform of Rawson's minor league ball club was talking to them. And believe me, they weren't missing a single word he was saying. All right, fellas, the hit and run is on. Now, you're tearing down towards second base. Chuck, let's see how you slide into that bag. Okay, come on. Okay, Skip, here I come. How was that, Skip? Oh, you slid in hot, all right, Chuck. What's the idea of coming up with your feet waving in the air like oh, my that? My gosh, I figure if I got spikes on my shoes and I chop at the second baseman that way, maybe he'll get scared and won't be able to make a double play. Yeah, and maybe you'll spike the guy, maybe cut a tendon in his leg and finish him as a ball player. Gee, I... I never thought of it well, that way. you gotta way. think of it that way. When you slide into base, just slide hard, sure, but clean. That's the way a real ball play always plays. Hard, but clean. Remember that if you want to be a big leaguer someday. Boy, a big leaguer. Wouldn't that be something? Skip's gonna be a big leaguer someday. <laughs> Ain't you, Skip? Well, where'd you get that cockeyed idea, Chuck? Why, Skip, you're the best pitcher Rawson ever had. Aww. Everybody knows that. Well, that's a fine vote of confidence, Chuck, but there's a whale of a lot of difference between winning games for a Bush League team and playing in the majors. But let's get back to coaching. Now, let's say the hit and run worked okay, see? And, uh-oh, here's the station wagon for you. Well, that's all for today. On the double, the last one there is a Bush Leaguer. And don't forget what I told you about sliding in the second. You bet you, Skip. Slide in hard. Yeah, but clean, Ed. Don't forget that. <laughs> you gotta play clean. Skip says so. That's right, Chuck. Yeah, Look, come let's on, let's go. go. Oh, what a bunch of swell kids. Swell kids. Kinda like them, do you, Skip? Huh? Oh, Mary. Hey, when did you sneak in, sweetheart? A few minutes ago. Thought I'd better check up and see if those boys had taken you away from me yet. Are you kidding? There's nothing will ever take first place ahead of you, honey. And don't you ever forget it. You better say that if you know what's good for you. But seriously, Skip, those boys really worship you. Oh. You're a hero to them, Chuck particularly. That's crazy. So I'm coaching them at baseball, so what? No, you're a good deal more than a baseball coach. They know you came from the same orphanage once, too. So they think of you as a pal, a big brother. And from what I've seen, they have a real right to. Hey, for Pete's sake, how did we get caught off base like this? You know it's getting late, and my inner man says it's time to eat. Are you asking me to share a snack with you? I'm a-asking. Then I'm a-sharing. Well, let's get moving, sweetheart. I've, uh, I've got to de- have plenty of vittles, because tomorrow's game's going to be a big day, you know. Oh, what's so special about it, Skip? Well, I'm pitching tomorrow, honey, and there's going to be some big league scouts around, and if they tell me what I figure they're going to tell me, well... Skip, you don't mean... Look, all I'm saying that, well, if they do, you and me, well, we have some important talking to do. You betcha, Miss Collins. Plenty important. Well, it was a big day, all right, in more ways than one. And when it was all over, Mary and I had our little talk on the front porch of the Collins' home. Only it wasn't exactly the way I figured it would be. You pitched a wonderful game today, Skip. What's so wonderful about it? Because I won? 
Didn't see any scouts come up to me afterwards, did you? Nobody offered me any dotted line to sign, did they? Oh, don't be so disappointed, Skip, honey. Being a big league baseball player isn't everything. Isn't it? Well, it's kind of late to tell me that. It's all I've eaten and breathed and dreamed about all my life, that's all. I know, Skip, but just remember this. You don't need to be a big league ball player to make you important to those boys at the asylum. Or to me. Yeah, that sounded fine, sounded swell, only I wasn't kidding myself. Kids don't pick failures as their heroes. And I wasn't asking Mary to tie herself up to life to a bush leaguer who never earned more than a two-bit salary. I was feeling pretty low and when I walked home that night. Maybe that's why I didn't hear him come up to me when he spoke. Still interested in that big league contract, Skip? Huh? Where, where did you come from? Oh, I've been following you for some time, Skip. Watching your progress, keeping an eye on you. What are you talking about? Who, who are you, anyway? Why, well, I guess you'd call me a scout. A scout? Hey, you don't mean from one of the big leagues. Well, there are only two big leagues. I represent one of them. Then, then that crack you made about, uh, was I still interested in a contract? Uh, that, that was on the level? You're serious? I'm quite serious, Skip. If you sign with me, I'll guarantee that you'll be pitching Major League Ball within a year. You interested? Brother, you just signed yourself a boy. Well, maybe you'd better hear my terms first. There'd be a personal contract just between the two of us. Well, I haven't heard anything so tough so far. What else? You'd have to let me coach you, play the game my way, right down the line. Well, as long as it's baseball, I'll play it. What, next? And you'd have to understand that when you're playing for me... Winning is all that matters. They don't give contracts to losing pitchers. Is that clearly agreed? Oh, sure. You haven't thrown me a curve yet. That's fine, Skip. Well, that's all for now. Good night. Good night. Hey, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I haven't signed that contract yet. Haven't you? Well, don't worry about it. You'll find that our little verbal agreement is binding enough. Good night, Skip. Well, that was the way I met him. Kind of a screwy guy, sounded like to me. But if he could get me into the big leagues, he could have more screws loose than the Model A Ford, and I'd still love him. I was feeling like a million bucks when I hustled out to the ballpark the next morning to give Chuck and the boys their regular caution session. I was early. They hadn't gotten there yet. But someone else had. Good morning, Skip. The scout, what you doing out here this hour? A good manager always checks up on his property, Skip. Huh? Oh, I get it. Well, um, I coach some kids out here, scout. Some of them are pretty good, too. <laughs> Might make some pretty good material for you in a couple of years. Yes, I have high hopes for that, Skip. But you're all through coaching here. I'm all through coaching? Oh, what do you mean, scout? You're a valuable piece of property, Skip. Twisted ankle, a broken finger, sore arm. Your value is gone. No, I don't take chances like that with my property. From now on, you don't touch a baseball unless you're paid for it. I think you understand. No, I didn't understand. Matter of fact, I was pretty burned up about that property gag. And I wasn't figuring on stopping coaching with Chuck and the boys for nobody. So I started telling them off. Then it happened. The thing that kept happening to me after that. He was smiling at me, like he'd done the night before on my way home. I seemed to hear him say something. There'll be a personal contract between the two of us, Skip. I think you'll find our little verbal agreement is binding enough. All of a sudden, everything he said made sense. I'd be a sucker taking any chances on an accident. I was heading for the big leagues. Why, he guaranteed it. What a joker I'd be throwing away a prize like that trying to teach kids, well, a bunch of goofy kids how to play ball. I saw Mary again that night and was all set to spring the big news on her. Only she opened up on me first. Skip, why did you stop coaching the boys? Huh? Uh, well, how did you... 
Oh, Chuck must have phoned you, huh? Yes. He said some scout was there who talked you out of it because you were valuable property. Well, yeah, yeah, that's right, Mary. You see, uh, I... Since I... when have you become too valuable to spend a little time with some orphans who idolize you? Well, Who need the kind of coaching you can give them? Oh, look, Mary, you don't get it. The scout guaranteed me a major league contract inside of a year, but I've got to work for it, concentrate on it. I can't take any chances of anything going wrong, can't you see? I can't let anything get in my way now, can I? I, I, I can't. Is that something this, this scout said to? Well, what if it is? What about guys like Feller and Greenberg, Hubble and Marion? Do you think those guys could have made it if, if uh, they didn't have ambition and drive uh, without doing it the hard way? No, Skip, I'm sure they did it the hard way. But I'll bet they did it the clean way, too. Well, what's that supposed to mean? They, they had control of themselves and their ambitions. Oh, Skip, I'm afraid your ambition has control of you. So now you think I'm a screw-loose dope with one foot on a cloud and the other in a bucket? No, Skip, no. It's just that I, I'm afraid, Skip. Please don't listen to that scout anymore. Please forget about making the big league that way. Please, Skip. For our sakes, please. <laughs> I couldn't figure it. Just didn't make sense. Here I thought she'd get as excited over the good news as I was. But she called my home run a foul ball. I, I, I couldn't figure it. I tried to forget Mary and concentrate on baseball. The scout was working with me all the time, advising me, coaching me. And everything he told me, just like uh, when I brushed off Chuck and the boys, everything made sense. I started learning fast. There was that game with the red shirts. A couple of errors behind me put me in a tough spot. Men on base and the league's leading hitter waiting at the plate. The manager came out to the mound from the dugout to talk to me. Uh, what do you think, Skip? He's a tough baby. Yeah, he'll get what, uh, well, what he don't like. I can pitch to him. Maybe. What are you figuring? Something low and inside? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, low and inside. Uh, get back there. I'll pitch to him. Low and inside nuts. He'll get what the scout told me to give him. If a batter crowds the plate on you, throw a hard, fast one at his head. That'll drive him back, Skip. That'll loosen him up. So I pitched to him. I gave him one on the inside, all right, right at his head. Hey, he beamed him. Got him right in the head. That boy's finished for this game. Yeah, if he ain't finished for good. Okay, we won the game. And others, too. Like the one with the golden bees. It was the last half of the ninth. Score tied. One out. We had a guy on third, and I wangled a base on balls and was sitting on first. Almost anything meant the winning run now. Anything but a double play. A double play would kill us. The pitcher towed the rubber, gloved the ball, looked at me over his shoulder, and then he threw to the plate, and I started tearing towards second. The hit and run was on. And the batter took a swing. I saw the play out of the corner of my eye. A deep ground at a short. The shortstop threw it to second, one out. And the second baseman started his pivot to the throw to first. And if he made it, it was a double play, and then I heard the scout. Break up that double play, Skip, if you have to give him the spikes. Break it up, Skip, the spikes. I went into second, sliding hard with my razor edge spikes cutting across the baseman's legs. <laughs> won that game, too. It's just like the scout said. You have to play to win, Skip. The big leagues are waiting. Play to win, Skip. That's all that counts. Play to win, Skip. Play to win. Play to win. And I was winning, too. 13 out of my next 15 starts. Winding up the season with 27 wins and only four losses. How good can a pitcher be? So maybe I beamed a few guys who wouldn't back away. Maybe a couple of second basemen needed a few leg stitches for spike wounds. Maybe the fans were starting to boo me and the other guys on the club were giving me the cold shoulder. But so what? Like the scout said. What do you care, Skip? You're not gonna be here forever. Win those ball games and you'll move on. That's all that counts, winning those ball games. <laughs> I 
hadn't seen Mary all that time. I talked myself into thinking that it made no difference. It didn't bother me. Then it was the day before the last game of the season, the game we needed to cinch the pennant. I was gonna pitch that game, and I was in my hotel room studying the batting order, figuring my strategy when there was a knock on the door. I opened it. Hello, Skip. Mary. Hiya, Skip. A Chuck. A Mary. Uh, come in, come in. Well, sit down. S sit down. Thanks. Gee, you sure look nice, Mary. Thank you, Skip. Oh, and you too, Chuck. Bet you've grown a foot since I last saw you. Been playing any ball? You bet I have. Our team won the school league pennant, Skip. I was the pitcher. We skunked everybody. Oh, boy, that's well. Yeah, it was the coaching you'd given us before you... Well... Why didn't uh, you tell him about the rally, Chuck? Uh, a rally? Uh, what rally is that? Well, gee, Skip, Miss Counts was going to give us a picnic up in the mountains today. You know, a sort of reward-like for winning the league race. Well, that sounds great. Sure, you bet. Only, only we fellas got talking about it, and, well, you're really the guy who fixed it up so we could win, and... and Ah, oh, gosh, Miss Collins, you tell them. Of course, Chuck. What the boys want to do, Skip, is to make that picnic a good luck rally for you. They want to call it the Skip Welch Big League Rally, and they'd like to have you there as guest of honor. Uh, you, you mean that, uh, well, after all, I, 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 <laughs> they still think enough of me to win one. What do you say, Skip? I... You'll come with us, won't you? Gee, the fellows all want to see you real bad. Well, Skip? Sure. Sure, you bet I'll come. You just bet I will. The picnic grounds were back up in the mountains. It was quiet there and peaceful with nobody around. After the fellas and I sort of got acquainted again, they went off exploring trails, and Mary and I were alone. It was the first time in a long time, and, well, I felt kind of funny. I hope you didn't mind too much coming out here today. Oh, no, no. I, it, it, was, uh, it was okay with me, Mary. They tell me the big leagues will all be big and bidding for your services after tomorrow's game, Skip. So you've accomplished what you set out to do. It's yeah. not every man who can say that. Yeah, I guess that's right. Proves something to you, too, hasn't it? I think it has, Skip. It's proved you've won your goal and lost yourself. Proved that I... I... So we're on that merry-go-round again. I don't think we've ever been off it, Skip. Well, I'm getting off it right now. Here, I figured that after I show you I could get where I was heading my way, you'd listen to reason. Why, I was going to rush out to your house tomorrow after things were settled and ask you to marry me. I'll be very happy to marry you. Well, you, 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 uh, you'd be very happy to... Uh, I should have said that long ago, I guess. It's really been my fault what happened to us. I don't, I don't get it. I, I... Well, I... I let you battle this thing by yourself, Skip, instead of helping. When I read in the papers about, about the way you were playing, well, I should have gone to you right then. But maybe it's too late now. Maybe you don't really want me now. Mary, Mary, honey, want you, gosh, I... I sweetheart, you just wait and see. Everything's gonna be fine. Skip, that's Ed. Something's wrong. Yeah. Uh, here, Ed. Over here. What's the trouble? Skip. Skip. It's Chuck. Help, Skip. It's Chuck. Well, what about him, Ed? What happened? He fell over the side of the canyon. He's lying way down there. Skip, I, I'm scared he's dead. I tore over to where Ed told me. Down below, maybe 60, 50 feet, was a tiny ledge. Beyond it, nothing but thin air for another couple of hundred. Chuck was barely lying on that ledge. He wasn't moving. Skip, what can we do? Well, I'm going down after him. Ed, look, there's a forest ranger station a couple of miles up the trail. Get there fast and tell them for Pete's sake to get back with help before it's too late. You better get yeah. It was pretty tough going, nothing but loose rock. I kept sliding out from under my feet, but I finally got there, just above Chuck. I braced myself, wrapped one arm around an ironwood tree, reached down and managed to hook the fingers of my free hand under Chuck's belt. And then the whole leg gave way under him. I don't know how long I was hanging there. One arm wrapped around that tree, the other holding on the Chuck's belt. 
but a solid weight was straining at my arm, pulling at it, tearing at it as though it were going to be yanked right out of my shoulders. Then after a while, I was like in a daze, a dream. Voices were coming out of that dream. Voices. What do you think you're doing, Skip? Playing hero? Let go of him while you still got a chance to climb back yourself. Hang on, Skip. Hang on. Help's coming. Ed's gone to get help. Don't be a sucker, Skip. The boy's dead. You're just ruining your arm that way. Let go. No, darling, no. Remember what we said about the boys depending on you. You can't let him down, Skip. Don't be a fool. Do you know what it means if you ruin your arm? No big leagues, no money, no job in baseball for the rest of your life. And what good are you doing hanging on to a dead boy? You can't be sure he's dead, Skip. You can't be sure. Of course you're sure. Drop him, Skip. Drop him. No, Skip, no. Drop him. Hang on, darling. Drop him. Hang on. Drop him. Drop him. Drop him. Come in. Good morning, Doctor. Well, Mary, what are you doing here at the hospital so early? I guess I couldn't sleep last night, Doctor. Tell me, how is he? Chuck? Well, that fall was a pretty bad one, Mary. There was severe shock, several fractures, internal injuries. Then, then that means... But kids are strangely hardy animals, Mary. Chuck's going to be all right. And, and Skip, Doctor. What about him? Well, you know, of course, that his arm is ruined. He'll never be able to play baseball again. I was afraid of that. How he ever managed to stand the terrific pain he must have suffered, I'll never know. Talk about your torture, Rax. Why, he... Doctor. Yes, Mary? You still haven't answered my real question. How is he? Uh, I don't know. I had to tell him, of course. Ever since, he's been lying in that room, staring up at the ceiling, not saying a word. I think you'd better go in and see him, Mary. Yes, I'll go right away. Thank you, Doctor. Good morning, Miss Collins. You're the scout, aren't you? So you recognize me? I think I'd recognize you anywhere. Yes. Yes, I imagine someone like you could do that. What do you want with me? Nothing except to congratulate you on your victory. I don't think I understand. Of course you do. You know I was doing quite well with Skip until you threw your weapons on his side. My weapons? Oh, you needn't pretend innocence, Miss Collins. You know very well what they are. Though you used them late, you employed them very effectively. The victory's yours. A rather hollow one, isn't it? Skip's arm ruined, his future gone. It's not much of a victory. Goodbye, Miss Collins. I won't be seeing you again. Come in. Hello, Skip. Hello, Mary. How are you feeling? Well, my arm is shot, you know. I won't be pitching any ball games. Yes, I know. There'll be no big leagues for Skip Welch. No crowd yelling my name. That won't make any difference to you, will it? Why should it, Skip? It never did before. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you told me that, didn't you? Funny thing, Mary. I wasn't going to make the big leagues anyway. Why, of course you were. No, no. I, I talked to the manager of our club on the phone this morning before he knew about my arm. He said the big leagues didn't want me. They weren't interested in a beanball pitcher. And guys who were spike happy. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? I was on the wrong track all the time. But you told me that too, Mary. Skip, I... What are your plans, Skip, for the future? Well, I was always a pretty good mechanic. I guess I can get a job at Randall's garage. And there's time for coaching the boys, too. One of these days, Chuck's is gonna make... He's gonna make the big leagues the right way. Skip, I... I'm sure he will. There's one more thing. That inner man of mine, he's got plans too. Not sharing my heart and my future and my life. Would, would you be asking me to share them, Skip? 
I'm asking, Mary. Then I'm sharing, darling, everything for all time. For many years in our country, sport has been part of the whole educational program, and in our schools, an integral part of the curriculum. Managers and coaches considered themselves builders of character. But the professional emphasis, the win-at-any-price idea, has uh, swept character building almost out of the picture. Now the tail frequently seems to wag the dog and Character building is, is laughed at as being no part of the definition of education. Well, I'm old-fashioned enough uh, not to go for that. We who believe in the objectives of the family theater have in mind telling boys and girls and folks everywhere that there's more to living than striving for material things, fame or money or whatnot, and there is more to sport than winning at any price. It's not easy for a Skip Welch to seek first things first unless he has some contact or knowledge of contact with the source of values. That source is in the church, the school, and above all, the home. Good sportsmanship is not basically learned on the competitive play fields. Uh, not there. The boy had it from within himself long before he knew a formal competitor. Not honors, but honor, probably came to him as a slogan of effort from his mother's knees and not from any experience with bean balls on a play field. I have the most tender recollection of the few minutes after supper in my childhood in that old country home on the bare board floor as my father and my mother led in family prayer. Yes. We'll have better young men and women, better homes, and a better nation, and a better world. When more people realize that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Family Theater is brought to you Eddie Bracken and Kathy O'Donnell in the Scout, written by Sidney Marshall with Branch Rickey as your host. Music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and the production was directed for Family Theater by Jaime Del Valle. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who have felt the need for this type of program and by the mutual network which has responded to this need. This is Gene Baker inviting you to join us next week at the same time when Dan Duryea will introduce the postmistress of Laurel Run by Bret Hart. Join us, won't you? This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>